So I've got one of our listeners. He hit me up, Will, and he's like, he, he shot me a couple podcasts. He's like, hey, man, you should check these guys out. And I'm going to make fun of a podcast that's making fun of a podcast. But I think he was passively, aggressively telling me that we can increase our reach by using some active listening techniques. And by that, I mean, so like Luke, say something. Talk about uh, Fanny Willis winning the, uh, you know, winning her primary tonight. Let's see. Uh, I'm actively listening, and you're talking about Fanny Willis winning mm -hmm. her primary. Totally yeah. unsurprising. <laughs> yeah. No, absolutely. Are you talking about the crosstalk stuff? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, the reason we don't do that, Will. Yeah. No, solid point. <laughs> Go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> see, we've been doing it this way for so long. We've been very conscious not to step on each other from like from the very first episode. And he may be right if there's more crosstalk, you know, and things like that. Maybe, maybe the conversation might be a little smoother. Maybe, you know, probably even out a little bit. But we've been so conscious of not interrupting each other, so you know, from day one. And maybe we're in a bad habit of that. I don't know. I'm just going to well, start think, interrupting you. I, I think he was just busting our balls, but it's kind of funny because, and, and I don't know the setup of their podcast. I don't know if they're all together or they're separate or whatever. But and the one chick, Mike, sounds fantastic. Um. The other dude, like his mic sounds like Josh's. Josh is in the last episode. It's like, how can one or two mics? Well, I guess I, I answered that question. How can one or two mics sound fantastic? The other just, you know, sounds like complete, you know, camel shit. Uh, I, I guess I've already answered that, but I, I thought it was pretty entertaining. It was funny. And by the way, that was breaking news because I think um, Fanny Willis just did win her primary. <laughs> so it's like, Hey man, she had a challenger. I don't know what the vote total was for yet. I think I'm I'm still waiting for the numbers to come in, but uh, you know, I was kind of surprised. It, it would not have shocked me if she'd have lost her primary. It does worry me a little bit about Georgia, though, with her. I can tell you that. what they are. Well, what are they? So she won it thirty-eight thousand four hundred and fifteen votes. Her challenger received four thousand five hundred and fifty-five votes. It was 89.4% to 10.6. It wasn't even, it Not wasn't even, even remotely close. All right. Not and I'm close. telling y'all when it comes to Georgia, Cobb and Fulton County, specifically Fulton County is key to Georgia. Um, it's inner city Atlanta. It is low income Pookie and Ray Ray. And they are going to have all sorts of water mains breaking this November <laughs> when they're counting votes. I promise you, promise you that. And that's why, that's why I'm saying that Georgia is not a lock for Trump. That used to be a red, red state, but it is, it is red no longer. So Georgia's in play and that's, uh, Trump's got to overcome that somehow. He's got to win it by so much that any, it, you know, it overcomes any shenanigans. Well, I think that the funny thing is like right now, I, I think they're both in, in the same boat. I mean, there's a, um, you know, again, we've talked about it. Polls aren't votes, right? Uh, no, no, don't don't get me wrong. I would much rather be ahead in the polls than down in the polls. But the polls for Biden, when you look at, at the aggregate over the last several weeks, I mean, they're getting bad. OK, I mean, and, and like we talked about last time, they're, they're getting bad enough that one, he has to debate uh, because if you're up 20, 30 points, dude, you're not debating. Right. I mean, why would you even take a chance? You only get into a debate when you're neck and neck uh, or you're really looking for that couple point bump or you really need to get your message out to the voters. But, you know, I ask you, Luke, I mean, and, and several of the primaries, when you look at, I think, um, New Hampshire, and there was one other state, uh, I think Hawaii, where Biden did not get th over 30% of the primary vote. Okay, now that's pretty significant right now. Even with, uh, you know, even with Trump, obviously you had Haley still on a lot of ballots. She had Ron DeSantis on the ballot. So he's had some states as well where you're looking at 20 points. That to me is not very shocking because, uh, you know, it's the, the Republican Party is very polarized in general uh, right now when it comes to Trump, the MAGA movement or whatever. Uh, when you look at Joe Biden and not just specifically Joe Biden, when you generally look at an incumbent president and I'm just making this number up because I have no idea, I, I would assume that they probably pull. 85% of the primary vote, you know, as an incumbent president, regardless of the party. Uh, do you think it's concerning to the Biden campaign that he's got a couple states where like he is literally, I mean, he's winning the primary, obviously he's won them all, I think, except for one, 
Uh, but we're like, he's only pulling like 68, 69, 70% of that vote. Is that concerning to him and his camp? So you're talking about like who, who, so someone else is on the primary ballot in those states? Yeah, absolutely. Saying? Absolutely. Okay. I thought you were talking about turnout for a second. Like, cause I, I don't, I don't see how he could win the primary in uh, Hawaii when he only got 30%. It seems like. No, 30% voted against him. 30% vote so against him. Okay. He, okay. Yeah. He got 70% of the vote. 30% okay. voted for like Marianne Williamson okay. and, you know, a bunch of other D bags. I, I think, I think that uh, those people will still, well, they'll either stay home or they'll still turn out for Trump. I think uh, they might just stay home uh, or vote for RFK. Uh, just a, you know, I think there'll be more of those people on the Democrat side than the Republican side. Um, yeah, when you were, I, that, that whole time I thought you were talking about turnout to the very end. And I was like, wait, what are we talking about here? Well, well here's an example, but, right? So let's take New Hampshire. Okay, so New Hampshire, uh, which ran in January. So Joe Biden, uh, he was a write-in up there, 79,000 votes, 63.8%. Dean Phillips got 19.7%. Other write-in got 83 And Marianne Williamson got 4%. Yeah. Well, I, 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 I'm going to stick by this. I think it's going to be close, but... Um, I think I think the voter turnout. I asked you guys: these are going to get more or less than eighty-one million? All three of us agree it's going to be less, uh, for various reasons. But uh, yeah, I just don't see the turnout being high, and I think that's uh, that's that's a that's a win win for Trump. The turnout may not be high, but make no mistake, Trump's not winning New Hampshire. Trump's not winning Hawaii. Trump's not winning New York. Trump's not winning Wisconsin or Minnesota either. The dog on sure not winning Minnesota. Uh, you guys, you know, just checking the news coming out of there the last few months. Minnesota is lost. There's a man. There's a lot of who. There's a lot of Germans, uh, a lot of German immigrants in their graves over that one. Uh, rolling, just rolling. Buried. I hope they buried him in ball bearings, man, because they are they are spinning. Um, what's you know, it is yeah. funny you say that because what's now happening? that I think about it, I, I haven't heard Minnesota in the news in at least two months, not as far as polling goes. You know what I mean? Mm -mm. No, I mean, if you know, if uh, if DJT is smart, he'll fire you know who he has on his uh campaign staff now, uh, and uh, you know, and start over, and he will he will campaign in all 50 states. Uh, you know, a lot of the problem is that people stop campaigning they only campaign in battleground states but you know uh, all 50 states yeah I'd, I'd even make the trip out to hawaii to campaign yeah well apparently he's doing that i think he was um i think it was laura ingram that was talking the other day where he's come out with a 50 state campaign strategy knowing understanding that you're not going to win all 50 states like you said there's a there's a handful of states for both of them it's like hey look you know Trump is not going to win Hawaii. He's not going to win California. He's not going to win New York. You know, even though he says New York's in play, he's not going to win New York. Right. Um, but, you know, what's what's also interesting, I, I think, this year that I, you know, at least, again, just listening to the news and stuff is previously prior to this, uh, there was always a lot of talk about Texas being a blue state, Texas going purple. And, and Luke, you've been adamant for years as, as Josh busts your balls. You're like, nope, it, it might happen eventually, but it ain't happening this year, next year, whatever. Dude, I haven't heard one word about Democrats even spending any money in Texas. Not saying that they're not going to, but the rhetoric definitely isn't there this year like it normally is. Mm -mm. Not presidential wise. I mean, they're they're I, I, we watch the news. My wife watches the local news. Uh, there haven't been any Biden ads at all. Uh, whereas in other states, I've heard that there have been. So there's none of those. Uh, no, no big talk about it. It's all the local races, you know, uh, down near the border you know, like Brandon Herrera's running and all that stuff. So no, no, not a lot of talk down here. Uh, <laughs> but, you know, but also, you know, when, go, Josh, have you, sir, have you heard much talk in North Carolina or this? Oh like yeah. Spinning up. Yeah. There's a lot of, there's a lot of talk in North Carolina. Um, you know, and again, North Carolina is one of those States to where, you know, we elected, two GOP senators and then we turned around and elected a democratic governor. North Carolina is one of those bizarre states that just I I, I don't understand it. Um 
But when you look at the influx of folks that have moved into Wake County, which is Raleigh, and then Mecklenburg County, which is uh, you know a large part of Charlotte, man, it's blue. Like it's getting, you know, it's getting bluer by the day uh, because folks still, you know, folks are still coming into, you know, there, there's an influx in here. And right now the, uh, the governor's race um, is, I mean, it's, it's close from, you know, from what I've seen. Um, So dare I say that North Carolina is, you know, not necessarily a lock for, uh, for DJT either and again that's another one of those like that's another one of those easy states right north carolina you know other than yeah other than really raleigh and and charlotte like the rest of it it's red man but there's so damn many people in you know those those counties that they cancel out you know a third of the state no especially when you get over to the west and ash and asheville uh i forget what county that is i think it might be avery county uh, or Buncombe County. Uh, when you get over toward Asheville, dude, Asheville proper cancels out almost the entire western part of North Carolina because Asheville is the Berkeley of North Carolina now. It's the Austin of North Carolina. It's granola, crimes out of control, you know, pot everywhere, a uh, bunch of beatniks, petty crimes gone up, you know, and there's a, there's a ton of Biden stickers over there. Well, it's interesting, you know, you say that back to Roger's question about North Carolina, right? And you've seen, you know, I, of course, I don't have a behind the scenes thing. I, I don't know what's going on in Dallas, uh, Houston, uh, you know, down up to Austin. And, you know, I, I don't know that I-35 corridor. I, I'm not, I don't see TV there, but it, it seems like it would be. I don't know. I guess it still would be a waste. But, man, keep working on Texas. Work on that I-35 corridor if you're Democrats. Because, you know, Dallas is, I would say, getting more and more solidly Democrat, whereas Fort Worth is not. Uh, Austin, definitely. San Antonio, definitely. And Houston, definitely. I mean, if you can capture all those population centers, the rest of Texas isn't much. You know, El Paso is going to go blue anyway. So, I mean, shoot, man. Why not spend money there? Maybe money is. You know, if we've got uh, listeners in the Dallas, you know, the I-35 corridor. I know uh, Diego listens, who just won school board. By the way, congratulations, Diego. Congrats. That's right. So uh, we'll have a Republican on the school board down in Del Rio. But yeah, y'all y'all pipe in, you know, give us a, a tweet or a comment on this or on the website. And let us know what's going on in the I-35 corridor. So here's a question for you, for you, Luke. So we've long talked about, you know, the Hispanic, uh, the Hispanic vote, who do Hispanics, you know, primarily vote for. And You know, a lot of folks have said that Hispanics, you know, generally, you know, uh, generally Catholic, uh, you know, they they don't buy into this, you know, this nonsense uh, trans stuff and that they, you know, are fairly they're nuclear, obviously, you know, a lot of nuclear family uh, oriented, uh, you know, uh, one home will have you know multi generational homes, stuff like that. So if that's the case, and Hispanics you know are, are are conservative in their values, why aren't all those counties along the border and all of these places where they're you know where they're sending uh, illegal aliens? Why aren't those like Dorothy Ruby Red Slipper Red? I think it's legacy. That's 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 the answer. It's legacy. Hispanics used to vote like blacks, right? And the older older Hispanics, you know, uh, staying down there. A lot of the the younger, the new generation who came up in schools, maybe went to university, aren't moving back there. They're moving to the other bigger cities. I do think there is a. And I think Diego probably agree with me on this, even though he's died in the wool Republican dude, red through and through. I think there is going to be a seismic shift with the younger generation. But also remember one of the values goes back to Cesar Chavez, right? Sure. So, I mean, there's that tradition. It goes back a ways, but I think uh, the Hispanic definitely, you just look at the, the, the polling numbers and all that, are definitely moving away far more than blacks ever did. They're slowly moving away now. Damn cats me on. Yeah, you're about to get it. So anyway... Yeah, so it's just interesting. I think it's a, a generational thing. You, okay, you know. I was wondering. 
because I'm reading this right here and it says about six in 10 Hispanic voters are Democrats or lean to the Democratic Party, right? So 61% versus 35% who are Republicans or lean Republican. And then you have, you know, obviously you have the black voters uh, who are 83%, you know, Democrats or lean Democrat, 12% aligned with the GOP. And then six in 10 Asian voters, um, you know, half of Rogers people, 63% aligned with the Democratic Party, uh, while, you know, 36% aligned with the uh, with the GOP. Yeah. yeah think- Maybe it is legacy. I, would, cause I was curious about that because, you know, people keep saying that, but I'm looking at it and I'm like, it, the numbers the numbers don't work out that way, at least right now. And they haven't had, at least down south, they haven't had a lot of his, uh, um, I'm trying to say the right word. Uh, strong, I guess the best word, strong Republican candidates, you know, locally. They haven't had that in the past. Now they're getting that. You know, the the ones on the Democrat side are doing the old, you know, the old song and dance. You know, the new strong Republican Hispanics on the on the right side are uh, arguing the arguments that work now. Hey, you shouldn't be for illegal immigration and so on and so forth. You know, pull yourself up by your bootstraps, classic right wing, you know, type trickle down economics, you know, capitalism thing. I don't know, Roger, uh, I don't, I don't know, but th- this is all as a white man. So I'm speaking for Hispanics. As Let the token Diego minority on, on uh, <laughs> the C3 podcast here, you know, it, it's amazing because like, as Josh was talking about North Carolina, it's not a very, it's not a whole lot different here in Arizona where we have a Democrat governor uh, way left and two Democrat senators, but we have uh, the GOP has the majority in the state legislature. Like that makes no sense to me. That means somebody went in there and pulled the lever for a Democrat governor, right? A Democrat senator, far left, okay, way left, and then pulled the lever for Republican state representation or state representative. That makes no sense to me. Like, maybe we're just more out of touch than what we think. Cause I just, you know, even here when I, when I read the rhetoric on like X and this and that, and I just, uh, one guy out here, he's, he's basically a data guy. And, uh, I wish he would actually respond. You know, I posted something on there. So like, dude, somebody's really going to go and vote for, you know, Katie Hobbs or, you know, at the time we're coming up Ruben Gallego and then vote Donald Trump. Like who does that? You know, that I don't get. I, I don't understand it. Maybe I'm just out of touch or or maybe we're just more in tune to some of the day to day stuff versus what a lot of people are. Uh, but, you know, a lot of it, too. Is, and, and Luke, you hit this on the head is, you know. It's quality of candidates. A lot of that is, is quality of candidates, uh, especially at the local level. And, you know, we were talking about this yesterday. I think I, I mentioned that, man, if I was ever going to run for senator, this is the year to do it because. I tell you, between Kerry Lake, who will probably be the Republican nominee, uh, and, and Ruben Gallego, did you could not for for Republicans and Democrats like they are. It's worse than Biden Trump. It's both of them are trying to lose. Like they both pick the worst possible candidates to run. I think either one of us right now could run as a Republican, or we'll probably even run as a as a independent leaning left and probably win this state. They are both horrible. They're atrocious. And unfortunately, you know, Ruben Gallego will, will probably win, but especially on these local levels and, and not even local. I mean, you get up to, you know, I mean, Senate, right? It's a, uh, it's a lot of quality of the candidate. And so I think back in the day when you used to get to where, Hey, you know, you had coattails, right? The president would, would let people ride their coattails and they'd bring people across the finish line. And uh, I don't think you see that anymore. You know, I, I definitely didn't see it enough with Trump, especially in the, I mean, with him losing the last election didn't happen at all. Uh, but then, you know, the big red wave again, you know, not able, not enough people riding that coattail to really you know, pull them across the finish line. So we didn't see a red wave. And and I think people tend to discount that um, on the local level, uh, when you get down into your districts and this and that, a lot of times it's not just party, but it's also name recognition and just overall quality of the candidate, man. I mean, look at Joe Manchin, right? I mean, how long has Joe Manchin been in the Senate? I mean, he's been there for a long time and he's choosing not to run again. Uh, but there's a reason why he keeps winning elections, right? For sure. <laughs> I didn't know if Josh was going or not. Sorry. Um, yeah, so I, I want to pivot real quick. We're going to try to 
we'll keep it political and we'll talk about Josh's favorite person. I'll kick it straight to him. Get my point and I'll kick it to him. Uh, the, the big, everybody's all a buzz about the DOJ, the, the, the search warrant. I don't know how the DOJ does it before they go in, but basically their rules of engagement were, uh, you know, they were authorized to use violent force if necessary, right? You know, it's, it's in the official documents, all this stuff. And everybody's going crazy about the Mar-a-Lago raid. They're, you know, they can, they can use deadly force if necessary. Everybody's all crazy about that. You were going into raid and you were going to shoot Secret Service if they, you know, whatever. You were going to shoot Trump. You were prepared to do that. I'm like, yeah. My, my thing is, don't they all say that? Probably every single one of them says that you know, authorized deadly force if, if necessary, you know, if your life is under threat, you're authorized to, to shoot, to kill, you know, I, I, I bet you almost all of them are like that, but I think everyone's kind of missing the point that it, it should have probably never came to that. You know, there's a, probably a better way to do that than, you know, storming in like a bunch of tier one guys, you know, a bunch of fat tier one guys trying to, you know, kick down the door and, you know, disabling security cams and all this stuff. I mean, was that re- fully armed? Was that really necessary? You know, a trauma unit on site. It's like, you know, why did it have to come to that? So, Josh, what, what's your take on on this outrage about the raid on Mar-a-Lago today and, and the trial, if you want to talk about that? So I haven't heard about it. I, well, so I have heard about the documents, you know, that had came out um, saying that, you know, deadly force was authorized. I mean, but I'm like you, I think that's a rubber stamp thing on most, you know, search warrants. It's like, hey, you know, if you go in there and it turns into a bullet festival, then obviously you're, you know, you're authorized to uh, to defend yourself. But I mean, we are talking about, you know, a former president of the United States. It's not like they don't know where this dude is. It's not like they can't find him, you know, in a simple you know, a simple coordination between the FBI and the U S secret service. Hey fellas, we've got to come talk to your guy and search his place. Oh yeah. By the way, we're on our way. We'll be there in 30 minutes. Now you've given, you know, you, you, you haven't, because the first argument is make a bit, well, they can't tip them off that it's coming. Okay. Well, you give him 30 minutes. He's not going to be able to, you know, if he, if he is doing something nefarious, he's not gonna be able to deal with all that stuff in 30 minutes anyway. But you just can't show up unannounced and, you know, start kicking at doors because, uh, yeah, I saw uh, just a very brief uh, thing from Julie Kelly on X saying that they were even, you know, even guests that were staying there, they were picking their doors, right? The guests, you know, the doors are locked and they're, uh, you know, sleeping, like they're picking locks. And if I'm at Mar Largo and next thing I know, like I hear some somebody's jimmying with my door in the middle of the night. Well, now we have, you know, we have the same situation with, you know, the what happened with the airmen up in uh, you know, up in North Florida, and up in Okaloosa County. Somebody's jimmying my lock in the middle of the night or early in the morning. Hey man, and you know, it's like, okay, who is it? And it's, you know, open the door. Well, okay. You're you you it just absolutely terrible the uh, handling of the entire situation all right and you know the, i i did see a black i will call it black helicopter but you know you think about it is you know far since the docs to trump he's like hey by the way you got some stuff over here at the archives you got to come pick up buddy you know to put in your presidential library they you know they salt those boxes with uh you know with some classified documents and the next thing you know they go and they're like Hey, by the way, FBI, that dude's got classified in his house. You know, when you go down there, you guys should be all gunned up because you never know what's going to happen. And, uh, you know, they go in there and next thing you know, former president is, is no longer because, you know, some brand new special agent just out of Quantico, you know, got jittery or got happy. And it's like, it, 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 so, it's, it's ridiculous. I know none, none of us are cops. Obviously, none of us are lawyers. Um, no, I passed the ASVAB. I couldn't be a cop. Let's see. <laughs> so let's see. Sorry, sorry, so the F- FBI, raid, FBI raids, uh, raids uh, Mar-a-Lago, right? And let's say that you are not necessarily a close associate of Trump, but you're in the Trump satellite. You're allowed to, or I'm uh, sorry, orbit. <laughs> you're allowed to... Uh, Go to Mar-a-Lago every once in a while. You get invited by friend to friend, right? So you go to Mar-a-Lago, let's say, you know, every every six months or so. 
you know, and let's say that you were there during that raid. And let's say that, you know, three, that you're, you're comfortable enough around Mar-a-Lago to bring a gun, right? Let's say you fly into Florida. You, you package your gun up right and everything. So the FBI raids, let's say you don't pull out your, uh, your gun because they knocked, they announced who they were. You, you can believe it. It's probably not some street thug. They come into the, you know, your room, uh, they search the room and they find that gun, right? Now, I mean, and let's say that that gun, you went to the range the month uh, prior with Roger and y'all accidentally exchanged firearms because they're the exact same. And now you have Roger's gun, right? I can't, I, let's say that there, there's something illegal about that. Can the FBI in the process of raiding that, they find a gun in your room and so there's something wrong with a gun and you're legally responsible for can can that can that can you be charged for that like can they find yes. a crime that's unrelated no can they find a crime that's unrelated on the uh, it, see that's the problem i have with all this shit so it depends on what's in so it depends on how the warrant is written uh -huh. right so if it's written in there all right you are looking for a b and c and if you come across any evidence of any other crime right that's the catch all it's like Article 134 of the UCMJ. It's like, hey, I'm looking for, you know, Article whatever. Oh, I found some shit that I can, you know, throw at you too under Article 134. Oh, we're 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 putting that in too. So it depends on how the uh, depends on how the warrant's written. That's because crazy. we saw, yeah, we saw that in a couple of CI investigations when uh, yeah. went to go uh, went to go execute. It's a it's an umbrella statement that you can put in there, evidence of any other crime that See, may I exist. Don't, that you I don't across. like that. And that's why I don't like the the FBI it's having counterintelligence authorities because I I've, I saw a couple of cases where, you know, in the act of sir, I, I wasn't on these cases, but I saw the uh, uh, the report of investigation, got to read it all, which was like a three binders thick. But um, yeah, in the course of the investigation, the guy was really only guilty of uh, uh, basically mishandling classified. Not, not no no true intent it was just mishandling classified he accidentally brought a right. document home but the, this investigation took place over like two and a half years so in yeah. that process they six they would see things in surveillance and they would six cid on it it's stupid stuff like time card fraud you know and it's like in the course of a ci investigation now the guy's still doing stuff wrong but i i don't like looking for other crimes i don't i don't like that you know especially if they're minor if you see him kill somebody that's one thing you know, but I, I, I don't, I don't like that, Roger. I don't like it. No, I agree. And I think, and I don't know the history of it, you know, as far as how that came about my, my guess, what I would hope is, and I have some pretty piss poor examples, but if we're, if we're like going to your place, I have a search warrant for like laundered money. Okay. But you've already moved the money and that's a charge, whatever it is, 18, da, 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 da. The money's gone, but there's bookkeeping there that shows some of that stuff. Okay. Which is a different charge, right? So I, my heart wants to believe that they did that stuff because, okay, well, we didn't catch you money laundering or with the laundered, laundered money, but there were items that were related to the crime or related to that activity that don't meet that specific charge, but, it, you know, it's all together, right? Um, I want to believe that's the reason why that's done that way, but uh, I'm like you, man. It's like, uh, you know, you come in looking for one thing, you find something else. And I'm with Josh. I think they were saying, I, I think I've read this in, in specifically in relation to Trump's thing was that, hey, they come in with a valid search warrant. They find anything else. I mean, dude, they were going through Melania's panty drawer. Mm -hmm. Seriously? Have you know, you, I don't know what you're looking for there. Have you guys, either of y'all ever been uh, searched by the police? Had your property searched by the police or... Uh, been detained by the police for longer than 10 minutes or 15 minutes, however, however long it takes to write a traffic ticket. No. My mom listens to this, so no. <laughs> uh, I'm, I'm kidding. She doesn't listen. No. no really? Okay. Well, <laughs> no, I mean, I've I, never had, well, I've never, I've never had my house searched now. Well, uh, we got some buddies that have had their houses searched. I, I'll save this story for another. Uh... <laughs> oh, that, yeah. <laughs> oh, boy. <laughs> Somebody is going to listen and know exactly what you're talking about. Maybe and I won't even say maybe no, not. They will. They will. <laughs> <laughs> they will. I'm not even going <laughs> to. They don't listen to whatever. No, he, whatever. he listens. And when he calls you and says, I know what y'all talking about right there. I want you to tell us. But um, <laughs> we're, we're, OK, so I had uh, I got another story. I'll save it for another podcast where 
I was wrongfully accused of a crime along with two two other guys, and it was pretty serious crime. So there was a big investigation going on behind our backs for like three months before we even knew. So during that time, uh, our trash was being searched. Our uh, they were there was limited surveillance on a couple of my of the other guys. Um, one of them actually did get searched. So knowing that people were looking into me, you know, after the fact, it it felt very violative. You know, I felt violated, right? Especially because I hadn't done anything wrong. Uh, not really wrong, you know, not not pertaining to what they were accusing me of. But, you know, another time I had my vehicle searched uh, and it's it's just a violative experience. Um, I it it so I, I, I don't I don't like it. I don't like the going through the panty drawer and all that stuff. And people can hate on Trump. But man, just the, the, the level that that dude is getting violated and dug into it is just it's a matter of time, you know, before they find that crime, you know, and I think that that's what these trials are all about is to try to dig up other stuff. You know, Josh, I, I don't know. I'm, I'm surprised that Josh has never been, been been detained by the police. I just I don't believe it. I don't, I don't believe it. I didn't say I didn't say I'd never been detained by the police. You I said, said you just weren't going to say house search. Oh, okay. I said I've never <laughs> had my house searched. Nice. <laughs> what about no vehicle either? You, cops never gotten overzealous and had you step out and no because Jen, you know i mean i'm you know with the you know with the police when you know you get pulled over or something you know it's yes or you know yes or no sir yes ma'am no ma'am um because again it's you know i was always you know i was raised like you're, you're not going to win that fight right you're not going to you, you know you're not going to win the argument the battle on the side of the road it's hey man yep no, no, sir. You know, polite. And if you violate my rights, I'll see you in court. Uh, you know, so polite won't get you out of everything these days. That no, it doesn't go as far as it used to, you know, and that's, you know, the cops list of the show, you know, I mean, I don't know. Josh talks about it more than either one of us, but it just seems like, I don't know. Y'all know the experiences <laughs> I've had down here with the power hungry little short cop we've got, you know, I, I've changed. <sighs> Well, you go ahead. No, I was gonna. I was gonna ask, right? Because so we can have a conversation back and forth, uh, active listening and stuff. Did you see the video that's uh, circulating around X now? Dude's handcuffed, and a uh, I believe he's an he, he, he's either a, I think he's it might have been ATF. Uh, so he's walking this dude past a couple of other uh, agents, and they're standing there, and one of them just punches dude in the face, just straight punches the guy in the face. Right. So dude's handcuffed. He's walking like he's not, you know, he's not resisting. He's not doing anything. And he walks by and dude just reaches out and just pounds him right in the mouth. And you're like, what are you doing? The guy's handcuffed. The guy could be the biggest dirtbag in the world. Or why are you punching this dude in the face? Especially in front of a camera or where there could be. A camera. Yeah. You wait where there's no it's, cameras. <laughs> what, I mean, you're just like, what are you, what are you doing? For the police that listen to this, I don't know how many there are, I'm going to tell you right now, a lot of your support went away in 2020. All right. You know, just because people were like, they didn't want their house burned down. They didn't want to say anything. So they, you know, they took down their back to blue signs. They took down their back, you know, took off their little back to blue, you know, bumper stickers and stuff. And you have a, you know, you have a lot of support still left uh you know with with the right side of the political spectrum i'm gonna tell you right now in the eyes of uh the public you're losing it now uh, with the situation in okaloosa county uh well both situations okaloosa county you know where the acorn hits the top of the car and the guy jumps up to the ground you know he does two barrel rolls and then turns around and mag dumps into the <laughs> back windshield of his cruiser because an acorn hit the car and all of a sudden, like, you know, that was like, he, he thought it was the Ted offensive all over again. Right. And so, and then, you know, when this dude just smoking the airman who opens the door, um, you guys, you guys are effing it up and you really need to get your shit together and you need to start policing your own. You guys got to stop closing ranks and you guys got to police your own and get the bad cops out of there. Because at the end of the day, I've quickly, I have quickly become, I went from pro police to i don't i don't like you nor dislike you right you just you're 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 going to wind up getting what you deserve so you, so he, you, he, you guys for, gotta for, police that shit up 
any if any of our police officers out there, they uh, Josh is not speaking for me. I, I love the blue. I back the blue one hundred percent. I don't need any speeding tickets or busted headlights or you know. No, I'm just kidding. I, yeah, I, I think part of the problem that you see, and, and, and it, it does become tough. It's become tougher because, especially my my son who's twenty one, getting ready to turn twenty two, and I've watched some of his interactions uh, with you know, the police over the last couple of years. And usually it's like speeding or, you know, he didn't turn his turn signal on or, you know, stupid traffic, stuff like that. And, you know, he's had a couple other things here and there, you know, nonviolent, but I see, you know, one, I've seen the tickets that he gets and I've seen several times where the police officers like said, yes, sir. Yes, ma'am. No, sir. No, ma'am. Very respectful. Still gave him the ticket. Right. Okay. That's I'm fine with that or whatever. But, you know, I, I've, he's also come home and told me stories like dad, they went through my back. Well, it's like, well, would did you guys go rob a bank or something or, you know, throwing rocks out of it? And it's like you, you start to hear that stuff. And then, you know, we had some other uh, altercations where uh, we were trying to help the police officer out, you know, because they wrote a wrong address, court address. Cop shows up at my house. I'm like, yeah, I get it. You know, my son was speeding, whatever. And correct that. And I'm like, you know, I won't relay the whole story here, but it's uh, dude, that cost me like three months of my life to get that fixed. You know, and, and administrative error, right, that I had to fix uh, that I didn't have to. And then with this latest incident, you know, he was uh, he was parked on he was in a parking lot. They were at, there was a birthday party or whatever. So it was like 50 people there. He's not driving. He's sitting there. And one of his dumbass friends goes out and does like donuts in the middle of the road or whatever it is. Cop gives everybody tickets. OK. And, and you know, OK. And again, I'm, I'm only giving getting this from one side of the story. So, uh, you know, I, so I understand there's there's two sides. But he's like, I wasn't even driving. I was just sitting here with his girlfriend or whatever. So they all get tickets and it's out in West Phoenix. So it was like an hour. So then he's got to go to court. And I'm like, man, insurance is going to suck again. This and that. He drives all the way out there. There's like 15 people there that get tickets. Cop didn't even show up. Cop knew he was wrong, dude. He was just being an asshole. You yeah. Know? Well, you know, so I don't know, that, that might be well, peddly stuff. That's not a big deal, but it's like those type of things. It just pisses me off. So before I retired, I was at home one day and, you know, before we live in the house that we live in now, we lived on a golf course. So the back patio, you know, sliding glass door onto the back deck. And then you, you know, overlooked, uh, we were kind of like halfway down the fairway on a golf course. Well, I'm sitting in, you know, watching, I'm doing whatever I'm doing. And there's this police officer like walking across the fairway. And we live in a, you know, a small, pretty conservative, you know, area. And I was like, well, you know, I, you, you, you just don't see that. And so this dude walks to the neighbor's house and he comes over to our house and I walk, you know, I get up and cause he's coming up to the sliding glass door and he's like starting to look in and then he sees me and I crack it and I'm like, Hey man, what's up? And he goes, can you open up the door all the way? And I was like, well, why? Like, I mean, it's cracked a couple of nope. inches. Like we, we can talk to each other and he can see, you know, it's all because the back of the house is like all, all glass. Right. Uh, so you can see the, you know, the pine trees and, and the golf course. And I was like, why? And he was like, just open it up all the way for me. And I was like, well, like it's open, like, you know, four or five inches. I was like, and we're conversing, you know, within half a foot of each other. And I'm like, I, I, why do I need to open up my door anymore for you? Well, and I was like, can I help you? And, you know, then he very visibly irritated and, you know, the tone in his voice. And he was like, I'm looking for so-and-so a reporter, you know, I was like, bro, I don't got anything for you. Like, I don't, like, I didn't see anything. I've been here all day. And he just turns around and huffs and walks off. And it was just like, not helping yourself, buddy, not helping yourself. I'm a little loath to paint all law enforcement with the same brush because I don't know what a Randall County deputy has to do with, you know, policing his own in Okaloosa County. I, I don't, I don't know about that. I think it's, I think cops, you know, especially city cops are, are disparate, right? Very disparate. Like it's easier to paint the military, especially the army with one brush than it is like these disparate, you know, police departments and sheriff's offices throughout the nation. Right. I do think, you know, there's when we say law enforcement, at least when I say law enforcement, I have a serious distrust of the FBI. I think I could paint them with with a pretty broad brush, ATF, pretty broad brush, DEA, uh, HSI, all of them. It's like I have, a, I have a serious distrust of them, you know, and the more local it gets, the more trust I have, despite what happened to Josh. You know, the more local it, it, it it's, it's like we talk about government all the time. Uh, 
you know, at the highest levels, that's where the most corruption is. They're supposed to have the least amount of control over your daily life. You know, you get down to the state, they have more control and then local has the most. All right. So I don't know, like state police seem okay to me in Texas. They actually seem better than most. But what the reason, obviously, Josh, the reason he was having you open his doors for a couple of reasons. Number one, probable cause. That's why I hate traffic stops. You're not you're not pulling me over because I didn't use a blinker. You're looking for probable cause for either drunk driving or anything that's going to get you a little extra money, you know, with the fines. Okay. I, and, you know, strict, you know, the, the, the traffic cops are like the, the infantry or whatever, you know, army infantry, uh, the ones that stand out from the army infantry, they go to the Rangers, which would be, you know, like a, you know, a better job within the police. You know, maybe you're on a, maybe you're, you're a detective now. And then your guys that stand out from Rangers, special forces, they go up to Delta, which would be like on a task force. You know, you're a local cop on a task force. So what I'm saying is the cream of the crop is not the guys making the traffic stops. Those are the guys that are the wannabes, uh, new, trying to make their mark, uh, maybe a little bit of a chip on their shoulder because they're not a detective, they're not a sergeant, whatever. The daily interaction you have with cops, you're that, that's part of the problem, right? The daily interaction you have with the cops doesn't tell the whole story you know you're interacting with the least desirable ones people like us are interacting with the least desirable ones you don't see behind the scenes the detective you know the guy on the task force whatever you know but i, I don't know so so my issue comes in and i get that you know every profession has their you know has their bad apples right but in the case of you know, Okaloosa County. And there's been, there, there is a number of other vignettes when you have a bad cop, right. You, you go back, take a look at, you know, any police officer that's been found, you know, planning stuff in a suspect's car, you know, or, you know, breaking the law, framing people, whatever. Almost in every instance, other cops in that department knew about it. When it comes out, like, Hey, everybody, that safety brief, right? It's a safety brief syndrome that when, you know, we get a safety brief and you come out and you're like, hey, man, um, hey, you know, we had a DUI, you know, we had something almost every time, nine times out of 10, you could be like, oh, man, that was Josh. I don't even know who it is yet, but I already know, who, but I know who it is, right? <laughs> almost every single time these incidents happen, it's the, it's the case of, oh, yeah. Yeah. You know, oh, th there there was dead hitchhikers in that dude's basement. Oh yeah, totally new dude. No, yeah, I, I could have told you that years ago, right? Almost every time. But they allow these cops to continue to operate because it's like, oh man, he you know he's part of the you know he's part of the fraternity, he's part of the brotherhood, he's part of that thin blue line. We can't you know we can't toss this dude out to the wolves. You better start because you're losing you are losing support from the base the little base you have left. Uh, and when that goes, you are, you, you are truly going to be on your own. See, I, I, I agree with you, but it's, it's the delivery, right? The police there. I know there's a couple that listen to this. I'm not talking yep. to you. I agree with Josh, but I'm not talking to you because I know who you are. And, um, I'm not going to paint you with the same brush as every other department because the folks listen to this show aren't like that, that I know. So. Well, they're you know, suffering not, like every other profession, right? But I, I do mean, think they know, could speak out, Josh. I do think they could speak out. Like, for instance, I'm sorry to cut you off, Roger. I do think they should speak out, right, and make it known, especially if you're a sheriff who has a Twitter account and you don't agree with that shoot or whatever it is. There's nothing wrong with you saying, hey, in light of the current events, this is how we do things. Assuring the public, we don't stand by that, you know, and that, that, that's got a wide reach. So, yeah, I, I think that there could be more speaking out. So I'll, I'll say – I. I and going back to what you were saying with the traffic cop, you know, being the, you know, one of the least desirable jobs, you know, they're just like every other, other industry where, hey, man, the talent is hurting out there across the board, right? Not just police officers, police officers, teachers, medical service industry. We talk about, we, we complain about it every week on this podcast, you know, so they're suffering just as bad as we are uh, without having a bad reputation anyway. Right. So then you take that least desirable job that you're already getting some bad apples anyway. And then you have folks that probably would not necessarily meet the standard 10 years ago. Uh, you, hey, man, 
got to keep the workforce up. So you end up hiring them anyway. There's a couple of waivers there or what have you. And they end up being on the police force, you know, and then you get more bad apples. You know, most places, just like anything else, you can handle five, 10 percent bad apples, you know, uh, that, that, that type of rate. When you get to 25, 30, 35, 40 percent, you know, it starts to infect your whole department. And, you know, we're starting to see it out here. I haven't seen it in our town yet, uh, but I think I read something the other day with Maricopa County Sheriff. That for the first time in, you know, like 10 years or whatever, they can't staff sheriff deputies for uh you know 24 7 they can't do it because people are retiring early they're leaving the force uh they can't get enough people to replace them right so as people are leaving the workforce you can't get enough you know deputies to come in to replace to backfill them so they're actually having to go you know it's kind of like brownouts if you live in california they're having to go a couple hours here and there where hey man we just don't have any coverage uh, and they just don't have the people, you know, and, and I, I think, you know, when you look at the fix for it, it's, you know, it, it's not just one thing. It, it's it's several things you got to do. And they're not the only industry that suffers from it. I mean, there's a lot of, you know, you look at teachers. We talked about this over COVID, you know, that, the reputation of teachers has been set to the lowest levels that I could ever possibly remember. You know, and I don't know they ever, you know, as far as teachers go, I know uh, they don't, you know, they might not ever recover from it. But I'll throw it back over to you, Luke. Uh, Luke you said you had a, a question for Josh. Yeah, kind of, kind of. And those teachers did it, and those and those teachers they did it to themselves. Oh, absolutely, absolutely. If there is same know, same as cops. Again, you know, a lot of my family's teachers. Not talking to them, but they know what I'm talking about when I say this. Uh, especially Kurt. It's like, man, some teachers are just insufferable, man. Like just insufferable, like so, so self-important, right? And I don't know which is worse, teachers or flight attendants. Because flight attendants are the same way. The, the <laughs> flight attendants, came, Southwest they became, flight attendants. They became yep. superheroes after infallible superheroes after 9-11. That was one of the third order effects from 9-11 is this complex that flight attendants all seem to have now with the, the power trip. But the question is, Josh. So like we're talking about cops, you know, and and speaking out and giving the wrong impression and things like that. But like, you know, and I talked about painting the army with a with a wide brush. It's like, you know, we can agree. I remember that internally when Abu Ghraib came out, <laughs> when all that stuff came out, uh, I think the the saying was the three stupid soldiers who lost the war. Right. Because things really changed after that. Yep. And we all knew that was a mistake. It was stupid. Some of the stuff 519th was doing in Afghanistan, stupid. You know, just you're you're doing more harm than good you know, so on and so forth, but like us, you know, good intelligence professionals who know that that's harmful. Like how, how, how do you speak out against that back, you know, back then, or if you could do it over or whatever, like speak out against just dumb assery that you're damn near making a strategic mistake. You know what I'm saying? Like, how do you speak out like and address that problem, you know, from, well, from your I mean, level as an E5 or E6? Well, I mean, you know, there's there's reporting channels that exist to to do that very thing. All right. Yeah, but so, it's af after the fact, like, you know, speaking out against what happened, not that you witnessed it, but you're unrelated to this situation, but you're still an intelligence professional. Perhaps you're in Afghanistan instead of Iraq when it happened. So I speak out again. Yeah, you know, I speak out against it on my burner account on social media. All right. That was before I Twitter speak out Facebook. <laughs> Yeah. So, I mean, <laughs> on you your know, MySpace account. <laughs> yeah. So, I mean, you know, I mean, I think WordPress was a thing back then. You know, people had people had online blogs. Yeah. I mean, I, I, I don't know. We're talking know, to Chelsea. How you Manning speak right out now. against it. I mean, I don't know how you speak out against it unless you're on a, you know, in, you know, 2001, unless you're on a major news outlet. I mean, you can still speak out against it. How far, you know, what's your reach? Uh, yeah. You know, I mean, it, but look. At the end of the day, you know, again, it's not a it's not a broad brush. It's speaking to those people who know who the bad guy who the bad guys in their formation are, right? That and I'm speaking to you. If you're a police officer and you know there's bad cops in your formation, you need to go out them. You need to get them out of your formation because there is going to come a time when people like myself, who used to be very, very, very pro police, you're going to see a police officer getting their ass beat or something bad happening to them and they're not going to help you. All right. They're going to stand by and they're just going to, whatever happened, you know, whatever is going to happen happens. 
because at the end of the day, you know, you think Roger's son after, you know, he's had some interactions with the police and the police haven't, you know, necessarily been very kind to him. What's his, what's his inclination going to be to help the police when he sees one of them getting their ass beat on the side of the road? You know, some people are like, oh, you know, me, I, you know, I'll, I'll always do what, you know, do what's right. And so I'm just like, and if that was a guy who was just, you know, kind of scuffing me up a little bit or, you know, running my son through the ringer for absolutely zero reason, I might be a little less inclined to stop and help you. I might just watch you get your ass beat or worse, whatever, you know, and because in the day, man, you should be held to a higher standard because, you know, you, you were placed in a position of authority over, you know, Joe six pack. And so you should conduct yourself accordingly. And if you don't conduct yourself accordingly, well, then so be it. Whatever happens to you happens to you. And yeah. So you're still talking to the cops that listen right now? Because when you, when you say it that way, <laughs> dude, it's fucking, I mean, it's offensive, dude. If I'm listening, I put myself in, you're saying you, 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 you. And it's like, why is he talking to me like that? I don't do this stuff. So like, what do you want him to do? You want him to get on Twitter more under a burner account? They don't, nobody even knows who they are at that point. So it's like, what are they supposed to do? So you didn't hear what I said, did you? With the cops, I guess not. The good cops yeah. that know who the bad cops are in their formation. Yeah, and listen, you, you, went, you, I might watch mm-hmm. you get your ass beat. Yeah. Yeah. That and then that. I changed to, and then I changed to the bad cops. Well, I didn't hear that part. Active well, I'm listening. sorry. I didn't, tra- I, I'm sorry. I didn't mm-hmm. transition, of, you know, properly for you. I didn't yeah. say you didn't. I said I didn't hear it. What's wrong with you? Mm-hmm. I'm good, man. <laughs> Yeah, I'm gonna send I'm gonna send bad cops to your house and beat your ass. Hey, <laughs> I'm gonna swat you. I guess I'm taking I'm it. Part of, you know, you're, here's here's the bottom line, man. Because you, you you maybe you're just maybe you're just more courageous. Maybe you have more personal courage than me. <laughs> because I'm sitting here, I'm thinking about these guys that are listening. But at the same time, dude, that officer in our neighborhood, Officer Garza, dude, that guy pulls me over one more time. There may be a problem. If he pull, if I see him doing something one more time, there could be a problem. But he's you were a bad actually cop doing he's something a local wrong. Cop. But you were that doing was, something I was speeding. Wrong. I was speeding. speeding. I'm not talking about when he but, when he stopped me up there. That was fine. That was fine. I had no problem with he, that. He was Took justified. He should have beat your I ass. He should have just drug you out and just beat your ass. I'm talking about the other <laughs> stuff he's done around here. <laughs> he's gonna Mike. He's gonna Mike Brown you. <laughs> that guy couldn't Mike Brown me <laughs> the other one's good the other ones are big boys but not this guy. here's the thing though right and so, so i'm like exactly i, I get I'm just about. as worked up i get just as worked up thinking about I, any one of these cops coming to my door for any reason so i, I, I hear you you know but and that's I, my point if you go to your if you go to your that police department that they don't know, listen that, either <laughs> that officer garza is, is is a member of if you go to that police department you go hey guys you know you got a cop out here who Obviously got shoved into, you know, wall lockers in, in middle and high school. Um, you know, it's on a little bit of a power trip. It's got an attitude. I guarantee you a handful of them are going to look at you and be like, oh, so, you know, Officer Garza, huh? They know, dude, they know who those guys are. They know who they are. Yeah, I yet, it's that. part of that whole like, well, he's a fellow cop. No matter how, you know, no matter how bad he is, he's a fellow cop. So we got to protect him. It's like you. You're not, going to eventually get put into that same bin if you don't get those guys out of your formation. You know, I'm going to find out if Garza got fired or not because <laughs> you're right. No, I, because I haven't seen him lately. So either he's on the late, late, late shift. But here, to your point, he probably got promoted. To your point, that police chief, this community was very vocal, like in in uh, you know in city city meetings, you know, city council meetings, vocal about these, you know, and the. The police chief knew after like the first major incident, he knew there was a problem, but yet he kept Garza on. Right now. I don't know if Garza has been fired since his last one. I think he may no longer no, be with the department. He, he's, he's busy receiving awards. He just received the uh, life saving, life saving award out there. Oh, officer Garza. Uh, what was yeah. the date on that? Uh, uh, they, I don't know. Don't, I don't see They don't update there. the website that often. Probably. No, this is just a regular, this is just a regular, uh, look at this. Here, here, he got it for, of, hey, he got it for saving your life, Luke. He stopped you yeah, from gonna, and hurting We've got stuff. body cam of you actually being pulled over on Facebook by Officer Garza. That would be awesome. <laughs> that would be hilarious. Hey, in that stop, it was, everything was copacetic. It was fine. I mean, he, no. he did ask about the 12 pack of unopened beer that was in my, passenger seat he asked about that and i was like what did he ask 
where Could I he got it. it. He he, he you was think asking like, oh, did you go up to Dollar General, get yourself a 12 pack? You know, and I'm like, what, why is that necessary? But Again, the rest of the time I was like, yes, sir. No, sir. That dude, that right there. Hey, you guys seen those, uh, the video clip of the two lawyers. It's shut the F up Friday. And they go through like these little scenarios uh, yeah. and they're like, if you get pulled over and the police officer asks oh, you, do you yeah, know yeah, I yeah. pulled you over? What do you do? You shut the F up, right? They ask you, where are you coming from? I'm not talking about my day. They're like, that's what you say to them. Where are you coming from? I'm not talking about my day. It's like, where'd you get the beer from? I'd be like, does that have any reason why you pulled me over? No, mm. it's none of your business where I got the beer from, actually. <sighs> See, that's the problem is, you know, and I know that that's counterproductive because we're <laughs> <laughs> because Garza, the problem, I'm going to go back to probable cause. He's looking for PC no matter what. And I, I hate that, dude. I'd be like, I none of them that. are open. And you can see by my license that I'm over 21. So what's your question? You wouldn't say that, man. Have you guys seen it's the all video? about utility? It's all about trying to get out of the situation dude, as quickly as dude, possible. Let me tell you something. And the other thing that didn't help me, you know, start get kind of jaded, started to jade me on police were military police. I despise military police probably more than any other. But they're any. not real cops. They're not uh, real police. Well, no, they're not. They're not real cops. So, dude, I got pulled over on Fort Belvoir. Uh, one day and le legit, the MP asked me, why do you know why I pulled you over? And I legit looked at him and said, probably because you scored low on the ASVAB. And that dude was speechless. He was like, what? You're going to pull me out of my car? But like, either give me my ticket or don't and let me go. And then when I had my classic Mustang, I got pulled over. You know, I got pulled over. So dude could check out my car. Oh, man. Which sent you know me through the roof. MPs, I, I, I think about MPs are probably worse. They are worse than Southwest airline stewardesses or airline people. Yeah. MPs are the worst. You know, the MP some, who gave Luke that ticket in Afghanistan. Exactly. Do you know what I was going for, Josh? I was going for the book. Uh, I love AJ it. Todd. It's on Amazon. Uh, snafus, foo bars, and tarfus, uh, and other sordid tales. But yeah, the story in Afghanistan. They pulled me over. Actually, I was just walking for not wearing a freaking safety belt, a reflective belt. Yeah, it was a. Uh, that, that that's story that's when you know that. the war is lost at that point. Didn't, at that point, when that. you're doing that, you, you know the war is no, we're done. Now you didn't yeah. put that. You didn't put that in. I there. didn't. I thought I did. No. Are you sure? You said you're going to save that for uh, second edition. I th I thought. Uh, you know, I probably I should probably know what you know is published out there that has like a like a number. I should probably know what I've put out there. I know if we do that again, I, I'm going to have to go back through the book and see which ones I told because <laughs> I don't remember everyone. You gotta republish the same stories. <laughs> I, I guess like, I, I guess I didn't. You'll be like it. Joe Biden, right? I think you know, we we republish the same stories and we'll sell another you know 150 copies. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe so people just feel sorry for us. <laughs> yeah. Oh, whatever man. Sells, yeah. man. Whatever sells. But today's a very important day, right? It's a very important day. And, oh, and Luke brought yes, it up it earlier today. Uh, why don't you go Mike ahead Brown's and break birthday? it down on, on, on why it's such, an important, <laughs> it's not why it's such an important day? <laughs> it's not the Mike Brown's birthday thing. The, was he the gentle giant? Yeah, he yeah. was the guy who he was going to be a uh, like a brain surgeon or a, a future astronaut or something like that. Right after he robbed the convenience store and punched the Asian guy, um, you know, he was he, he didn't do nothing. Yeah. <laughs> so, no, today is the first day um, that if Ukraine had held elections, I think a couple months ago. If Vladimir Zelensky, which they did not. If Vladimir Zelensky would have won or lost that election, today would be the first day he'd be out of office. So they've indefinitely postponed elections within Ukraine. And so we have labeled this officially day one of the Zelensky dictatorship. He's been dictator for one day, like Trump's going to be on, uh, <laughs> on inauguration day. So we'll see. Uh, I think, yeah. Yeah. Oh, geez, John. So, <laughs> so the, I mean, we can talk Ukraine, right? It's kind of been out of the news. Israel's yeah. played out. That's, yeah, that's one of the things that, you know, I, I like listening to Ben Shapiro, but it's like, could you go one episode without spending 15 minutes on Hamas and Israel? 
because like there's no real updates, you know. But anyway, Ukraine is kind of not in the news. And I think there's some stuff worth talking about, Josh and Roger, because we started talking about Ukraine right when it happened. And we made some, you know, we did some analysis. And I don't know, where do we stand today? Now that Zelensky, either one of you guys, now that Zelensky is the first day he's a dictator. Yeah, I'll I'll back it up. And and by the first day of of his dictatorship, this is Tuesday, May 21st. And had to do a little bit of reading on it. Uh, So apparently, so Ukraine's under martial law, right? Uh, Zelensky declared martial law and by Ukrainian, by the Ukrainian constitution, uh, if the country is under martial law, it's illegal to hold elections. So the only way they could hold elections right now is if he suspended martial law, held the elections, and then whoever wins, wins or whatever. So Josh, I get from his point why he obviously is like, screw that. I'm staying president, right? Because he could very well be voted out. But how do you sit there on the world stage and be like, hey, I'm on the, you know, I, I'm the last stand for, for democracy and freedom, right? The big red Soviet empire and the rest of the world, like, it's just me. How do you do that? How do you make that claim when you literally declared martial law, have kept it in place, used it to suspend the election so you could stay in he could declare he could keep martial law for the next three years right so so what he just becomes a, a what an eight-year first-term president well he has to right and and the argument i say he has to and put air quotes up there because the argument is it's the it's the kosovo thing well so i don't want to go too far down this rabbit hole the argument is there are portions of ukraine that are occupied and those people cannot yeah. vote to include sure. crimea so it's it's not even right to have a vote right now that because, you know, we don't have hundred percent representation. That's one of the arguments used. I, I, I don't agree with it, but yeah. Well, Crimea has been gone for a while, so I don't know what his excuse was for that, but it's like, Hey, for the rest well, of the it country, will be now, you know, it's like, Hey, you know, let them decide what they want. There are enough populated areas. It's not like they took, you know, Kiev or something like that, or Luhans, you know, or, uh, Lviv or something like that. It's like, Hey, you have enough representation there that the will of the people can speak. If you're truly, you know, you're all about democracy and freedom, you have enough representation there that, Hey, you know, now the other side is maybe he's worried about what the, what the opposition yeah. would actually think. Right. Maybe because what the vote you, would actually be. We talked about, you know, the draft and this and that and, and him lowering the age. I mean, I can't imagine that goes over very well for young men and probably even worse for the young women that are dating the young men. Right. So, I mean, he might not be the most popular guy in the country right now. And so the only way to, to stay in power is keeping martial law and just suspending camp, you know, suspending the election. So, so Josh, how much longer does this go? I mean, is this, is this another year? This is two years, three years. And I guess a lot of it depends on what happens with our own elections. Uh, but I mean, is it unfathomable that he, Hey man, we're just under martial law for the next decade and we just can't have elections. And I'm your president. I'm your legitimately elected president. I mean, it could go on forever, really, because you think about, you know, Zelensky, obviously, you know, he lost some, uh, he lost some press, you know, on October 7th of, uh, of this past year, you know, to BB, um, you know, and that's when a couple of days after like everything went down, this dude showed, you know, he's like, I'm going to Israel. Right. And it's like, aren't you fighting a war in your country? Um, you know? But when you go back and you look at Zelensky, uh, the dude's been a dictator even before he, uh, you know, sp- spent his first day, you know, today as uh, as the martial law president. Um, Zelensky moved against the Ukrainian Orthodox Church. He moved to ban the Ukrainian Orthodox Church uh, because it was led by, you know, somebody who you know, supposedly, quote unquote, is a Putin ally. Um, so it's like, oh, OK. So if I don't like the person leading, you know, if I don't like the Pope, if I'm president of the United States and I don't like the Pope because, you know, if the Pope, you know, hangs out with the president of Hungary or he hangs out with somebody I don't like. So I'm just going to go and ban the Catholic Church. I'm going to try and be like, well, the, the Catholic Church is banned in the United States. Um, he consolidated a lot of the TV media outlets uh, within Ukraine to become more, you know, 
uh, were more government controlled and, uh, you know, pro Zelensky, the ones at the very beginning, a lot of the social media accounts, uh, especially on then Twitter, now X, you know, that were not necessarily picking a side. They were just like, hey, you know, they were here. What Here's what's going on. Posting open source information. You saw some Ukrainian government f- affiliated accounts just absolutely spam those things. They were getting flooded with bots, you know, and everything. And so, you know, what you have now is a lot of pro Ukrainian government accounts. And there are very few accounts on there that, you know, are uh, neutral uh, toward toward Ukraine that operate from within inside Ukraine. Uh, so the guy is not and then he banned political, you know, he banned uh, rival political parties uh, around the same time he was consolidating his gains uh, you know, in office. So the guys, the guy's been a dictator for a while. Uh, you know, the, this is just the, uh, you know, the first day that, uh, you know, he's sitting in his office, uh, you know, since the election. And let's not forget that there's a whole lot of Nazis within the, not only the Ukrainian government, but the Ukrainian military, the Azov battalion is still operating. The Azov battalion still exists. There's a number of self-avowed Nazis that, you know, the United States is clear, you know, currently sending weapons to, sending aid to. So, you know, for for people to be sitting back here at home, the left, and, you know, continue to, uh, you know, tout this little, you know, midget comedian, uh, you know, and say, send him money and stuff like that. And then, you know, the same ones, you know, I'll punch a Nazi in the face. It's like, well, you're giving a Nazi money. You're giving Nazi, you know, taxpayer dollars right now. Uh, because that's what Zelensky is, uh, you know, and you just take a look because he's consolidating his power. He's consolidating gains. Uh, he's gotten rid of a number of various cabinet members. Those cabinet members have been replaced by people within his inner circle close to him. This is the exact, the exact same thing that Putin did when he took over after Boris Yeltsin. He brought in all his cronies from St. Petersburg all right, where he where he was before, you know, going to Moscow and put him in positions of influence and power. Zelensky's doing the exact same thing. But hey, Hitler you know, did that too. Yeah, Hitler did that. Stalin did that. Stalin. Everybody, you know, every every dictator, you know, in history has done that exact thing. So I think it's a vicious cycle at this point because for Zelensky in particular, because he he can't he can't have elections at this. Well, okay. He could have, he could have an election, but there wouldn't be any integrity. He's going to put that off. He's, he's not going to be, he's not going to do that. But if there was an off ramp to this war, right? If there was a treaty ceasefire, you know, completely signed where Ukraine cedes all that territory to include Kharkiv to Russia. Um, so it's no longer Ukraine. That's now Russia annexed, whatever. I'm sure it wouldn't be part of Russia. It would be Russia annexed. If Zelensky holds an election after that, he loses. He loses. Oh, yeah. Because he he has been, there is no off-ramp. He doesn't advertise an off-ramp. He never even talks about it. He wants to take, what what he tells, what he says in public is he wants to take back Crimea. Bro, that's never going to happen. So I, I, there's no off-ramp for him. And Americans, I'm telling you, are quickly losing interest in this. It's less of a topic on X. There's less bots on it. Now the topic of the day is, you know, anti-Semitism and Hamas, right? We're losing interest in this. So they're going to get less and less attention. Europeans have actually kind of started to step up on this. They've upped, what, upped uh, you know, defense production. Uh, you know, France was rattling their little sword, their little tiny sword about sending troops into Ukraine a couple of weeks ago. It's just... I don't know, man. I don't, I don't, there's, there's no off ramp, but I guarantee you this. Well, I don't guarantee it. I think a safe bet is that if, if Trump wins this election within a year, there'll be something, there'll be something on Ukraine. Yeah. And they're in a tough spot. You know, they're very similar to Taiwan. Okay. And I'm going to tell you right now, Ukraine's future is becoming Belarus. That's their future. That is what's going to happen. Um, it may not be, you know, in three years or four years, it might be 10, but they're under the same challenges that Taiwan is under, right? It's 
when you continue to have these elections, uh, you're going to have a party there. And, and, and I don't know what the numbers are right now as far as who supports and, and who doesn't. But there's going to be a certain number there, you know, like with Taiwan, that's pro-Chinese or pro-China, pro-China relations. Right. Did you see, there was so a you, fist fight in their parliament last week, like a fist China? fight. Taiwan. Oh, Taiwan. Taiwan. <laughs> the dude grabbed, so do grab the bill that they were getting ready to vote on because he didn't want to pass. Grab the bill because, you know, the physical bill and ran out with it and they couldn't vote on it. Do we know what the bill was for? I don't. I didn't. I didn't care enough to follow up on it. Uh, but <laughs> but. That was right after, uh, you know, uh, MTG, you know, called out uh, whatever that ghetto lady is, uh, whatever her name is, because uh, her eyelash was coming off. Crockett. Crockett. Yeah. Right after she called out, uh, right after she called out Crockett. And uh, then this dude grabs the bill, runs out. No, I don't know, man. Me personally, if that could keep Congress from voting on something, you just grab it and run out. Maybe we need to get a hold of the lectern guy and see what he, you know, see what he can do. You know? That or the fire fire alarm, right? You just pull that. Either. You pull that. Yeah. I, I yeah. still say I still say that MTG takes either one of them and maybe both of them at the same time. AOC and Crockett. Oh, yes. oh hell yeah! Oh, oh, what, what did Crockett call her? It was actually kind of kind of funny. Bleach blonde. Bad built body, <laughs> butch body, or something like that. Butch, bo bad built, butch body. That's right. <laughs> then Dude, so Marjorie Taylor Green, I was like, Ugh, she's yeah, deep. Yeah, she put out a video of her doing like this little CrossFit like power cleans, and I was like, dang, yeah, she's blocky, it, but that girl's strong. Me, who was one? I yeah. think you brought up Luke. Who was the? Uh, I think he's a senator. Like, is he the, the one from like Oklahoma or something like that? Who's like six? six or whatever that guy's like if you want to go at it that dude stands up like okay that's a yeah. big boy <laughs> like, yeah i'm they not gonna him call go him out. Out. i would dude i would i would love nothing more than to go back to the you know uh you know the the, the late 1800s house of representatives where it was like all right man take shirt off we're we, we are going to fix this right here because a caning is a thing and, yeah. and you're gonna find you're gonna find a cane right in your face and then you're gonna get the beat down <laughs> I, I, we talked about that after, oh, Senator, what's his name? He is Oklahoma. We talked about that. You know, it's the same as like, I don't know. I, I, I would love to see it. It's just a little, so I didn't mind seeing that exchange between them. I think it's funny. No, I didn't. Either. I think it's, I think it's, but good. yeah, you guys want ties to be worn. <laughs> well, I still think people should be in suits. Uh, yeah, you know. <laughs> this is just so, <laughs> but I'm telling you, man, there is something to be said. Luke so just wants to pull a, Fetterman's uh, hoodie over his head like a hockey match, just, just like yes. beating exactly. on his kidneys, just start pummeling. Um, I'm telling you, man, there's something to be said. So, you know, when I was in, uh, you know, when I was in Alaska, you know, in a cab troop, man, it was like if you had a problem with someone, you went to the combatives room, you put on the gloves. You put on the little, you know, the little boxing helmet. You took your BDE top off. And when you were done, that problem was solved. That whatever that problem was, it stayed in that room. That was it. It was done. It's over. All right. And, you know, some guys after that, you would, dude, they became, you know, you became friends with them. And then, you know, some of you, know, you didn't, but, you know, but that it, it was settled and it was done. And so, dude, I don't know, man. I, I, I think there's value in it. I, I would revise what I said a second ago. I liked seeing that. That's, that's not what I said. I, I enjoyed, I guess I, I liked that like insult thing back and forth. Cause it reminded me like British parliament a little bit, but what I, what is so off putting is all three of those people. I just make my skin crawl AOC Crockett and MTG. It's like, really? I mean, can we, how about Rand Paul call out, you know, Nadler for having, you know, a, a FUPA or something. I mean, that, that, that would be funny. Yeah, and how how some of these folks continue to get elected? It, it's it, it's beyond me. But I wanted to circle back real quick. The uh, going back to the whole off roading, off ramp for Ukraine. Best case for them, and what's going to happen is they're become Belarus. You're going to the the Ukraine Ukrainian people are eventually going to by influence operations or whatever it is. Uh, they are eventually going to elect somebody who is going to be pro Russia. OK, uh, and maybe not like, hey, we're going to become part of the motherland again, but we want to increase relations. Um, you know, we want to increase relations because of energy and exports and imports and, and whatever else the case is. Uh, same danger that Taiwan's under. Right. They're, they're worried about that pro-China relationship, that pro-China candidate. And you got to remember, 
you can have, you know, nine or 10 elections where it's all about Ukraine, Ukraine, Ukraine. It only takes one. Okay. It only takes one to say, Hey man, we're going to, uh, you know, we're going to be a little you know, more pro rush on this thing because of our economy and trade or whatever. So you end up becoming another Belarus, you know, and I, and I think Josh throwing out there that, you know, uh, you know, if, if they elect somebody who's pro Russia will intervene, you know, and, and, and that may very well be the case. That may very well be the case. I'm just looking at it when you, I think that is the natural order of things there. I think that's the road that it goes. Uh, and, and, you know, again, it may not be in a couple of years, it may be 10 years or so. Uh, but I do think that that is what's going to happen over in Ukraine. And, you know, I think it's just like with Taiwan, right? We're just, we're all sitting there waiting for the other shoe to drop. It's like, we don't even recognize their sovereignty ourselves. You remember like 13 other countries that do. So how much longer do you go? I mean, fortunately, the last elections uh, were very pro-U.S., you know, as far as our interests. Uh, but again, it only takes one election. What happens in four or five years or 10 years? Uh, when you, you know, who knows where China's economy is at that point, their imports, exports, trade, energy, cars, EVs, you know, you're looking at precious minerals uh, and you may get somebody in there that's like, hey, man, we need to closen that tie a little bit, you know, make that, you know, strengthen that relationship a little bit. And then from there, it's gone because you it may never get it back. Well, I, you know, again, but if we don't, if we don't like it and we as in the United States, just like in the 2004 Ukrainian election, we're, we'll intervene. When, you know, when Yushchenko, uh, it came down to Yushchenko and Yukonovich, uh, you know, it was too close. We we're like, oh, no, man, you know, the world got behind the U.S. and the U.S. had to, the U.S. had to meddle in it. And Yushchenko, you know, came out on top in the runoff, um, you know, and, and that wasn't good enough. We couldn't leave well enough alone in 2014. It, uh, yeah, the same thing, you, you know, with the whole Maidan revolution stuff. And it's like, oh no, the U.S. didn't have anything to do with that. It was like, oh, really? Why was John McCain in Kiev in 2014? You know, while this was happening, why was a whole bunch of elected U.S. officials in there? Because we meddled in 2004. It was just like you know the Iranian coup in 1953. We didn't like how it went, so what did we do? We installed our guy. You know, we have a uh, and there's more. You know, there's more examples and more vignettes. So we, uh, you know, we have a history of this stuff. Uh, and we need to, uh, we need to stop because it's really not working out for us. Well, I just saw a tweet that upset me a little bit. So y'all know, uh, maybe you don't that the international community, uh, criminal court, international criminal court, which is the U S is not a signatory to, uh, it's mainly European countries and a few African countries, the ICC and the Hague, uh, decided they were going to go ahead and indict. Uh, BB Netanyahu, uh, Benny G or Gallant, some somebody Gallant. He's the Secretary of Defense for Israel, and also Yahya Sinwar, the head of Hamas, all in the same day. So it's <laughs> first of all it's the like IC the ICC is a joke. Uh, it shouldn't be taken seriously. The UN shouldn't be taken seriously either. But the ICC is even a bigger joke. I got stories. I, I lived in the Hague for a while. I got to see how they operate. Um, yeah, so the it, it's a joke, and you know, even the Biden administration came out and it signaled it's not it's they're not going to support this this message coming from the ICC. And they they now what's their their authority only lies within the within the signatories, and, okay, and it's not okay. even authorities, dude. It, it's each each signatory country, like if a British citizen, like a uh, some British troops got indicted by the ICC, it's incumbent upon Britain in whatever way they do it to arrest those guys and bring them to the international community, uh, criminal court. Right. So right. anyway, the Biden administration, uh, decried that it's just a bad look all the way around. Well, how does sentencing stupid, work? Stupid then? So if like you go to that, so let's say Britain, they rest, you know, whatever. And they, they, has anybody actually been tried at the yes. ICC yeah. and like, Hey, you're going yes. to prison. A uh, African warlords. Uh, there's been a few of them as you know, uh, there's a lot of African signatories. Uh, that's kind of where it started. Uh, it kind of was a spinoff of the the ICTI, you know, the Yugoslav trials in the in the Hague. So, anyway, yeah, there have been people tried. These trials take years, and I've seen where they live during the trials. Uh, they live in hotels, nice hotels. They're allowed freedom of movement uh, during the trials. I mean, it's 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 a freaking joke. I think there have been a couple sentencings, but I told you I saw where Milosevic lived. I mean, you live in basically yeah. a house. You're just basically under house arrest. You can get whatever you want. Uh, you live a pretty cushy life. You just can't 
periodically leave that place. So yeah, uh, anyway, the tweet that pissed me off is, okay, Biden administration is making the right move, in my opinion, saying, ICC, this is stupid. And then Ben Rhodes. Do you guys know who Ben Rhodes is? Ugh, he's Yeah, awful. he was. Like, uh, yeah. yeah. Just, he's so stupid. He said, it would be a historic and dangerous mistake for Democratic administration to participate in an attack on international law and institutions. That's so dumb, bro. And you are like a leading expert appear on news shows and stuff. It's like, bottom line, ICC is a joke. Biden administration, credit where credit, credit's due. At least they denounced it, you know? But we did have good news this week. What was the good news this week? Oh, geez. Right? It's only right. Tuesday. Well, yeah. I mean, well, you know, happened a couple of days ago now, I guess. You know, the Iranian president. Oh, yeah. Oh, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. About that yet, man. yeah. And you, you know what's Kobe. funny? Well, yeah, I mean, it, so here's what's funny. is like when it happened, uh, you know, I think we all saw it on X or, or whatever. And it was, um, I, well, I didn't realize the weather was as bad as it was. I mean, they were talking about that the first reporting came out said hard landing, right? It's like, okay, you know, whatever, uh, hard landing. What does that mean? And then a lot of mixed reporting came out. Obviously, uh, you know, Iranian press and, and their leadership was scrambling for answers. And then when we started seeing pictures of this stuff, I'm like, who in the heck thought it was okay to fly in that? Right. And then it came that, hey, man, they haven't found his body. It's nighttime. They can't get to him because of the weather. So, like, even if he did survive the crash, he's he's dead. But I didn't. I've only seen one or two posts actually like, OK, he is dead. I don't know if you guys seen more of that on on X or the news or whatever, but I've only seen a handful of posts talk about it, which I'm it's surprising to me. I figured it would be all over. I've seen it multiple times that he's dead from actual news sources. Um, yeah, yeah, it's Iranian it's interesting. What what I find interesting about this, Josh, and we're we're trying to keep this at about an hour and a half. We've got like eight minutes left, so y'all forgive us. Uh, we we uploaded to Rumble the other day and got like sixty something views. So we're like, what's going on? So in order to go to Rumble, it's got to be about an hour and a half. But <laughs> I just went completely off the rails there. Sorry about that. <laughs> but the Iranian Joe. president. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So so yeah. If you look at it, you know, it's interesting that the Biden and the UN and everybody, NATO came out and gave condolences. When Pol Pot died and Bill Clinton, you know, had to respond to that, he put out a scathing remark about Pol Pot and his, you know, civil rights uh, atrocities that he he did, as, as did Raisi, you know, the butcher of Tehran. But everyone put out, hey, we, we, we know whatever, you know, con condolences, right? Screw that was dumb. that, man. Yeah, screw that. That was super dumb. Why? I was just I was just about to comment on that. The UN like did half, you know, flags at half mast. The you know, Biden administration offered condolences. It's like this guy was directly responsible for the death of thousands. I really and, wanted mm, I wanted to talk about this one more. We should have brought this one up at the beginning. I'm sorry, Josh. It's just there's a lot to say on this actually. I know. Well, you got me. You you egged me on and got me. You know, hating on no. cops. It's the other way around. Josh is gonna get my, pulled over. He's about to get you spotted. got my you got my goat. <laughs> <laughs> We're gonna pull a uh, what, what's his face that gets swatted like every other day, supposedly. Tim oh, Pool. Tim Pool. Yeah. Remember like, Tim, Tim Pool. Good thing we don't do this stupid. live because because Josh will be getting swatted right now. i would be like ah yeah. Tim Pool. What's that idiot up to these days? Yeah, talking trash. So what is the death? So you look at the death of the Iranian president. Obviously, they have to have another election. I think uh, the VP takes over. Days. They Yeah, they hold another election or whatever. But, uh, you know, they had, uh, unlike the last dude, um, I didn't forget his name now, Monadajad or whatever the hell his name was, but they actually had some, like, some future hopes for this guy, right? I mean, they kind of yeah, expected him be, after. He was going to be the next Ayatollah. Yeah. So, I mean, you know, you, you're looking at somebody that they – truly expected to be around for at least another 20 or 30 years. I just wish we had an, an, an you know, an operational intelligence, you know, a national operation and operational intelligence branch that specialized in like coming up with plans. If something happens, you know, I, I just wish we had something like that real quick though, as far as the condolences, right. Iran actually had a point. They came out and they blamed, well, according to some sources, they're blaming, uh, 
the embargoes we have, the embargoes that the U.S. has you know, forced upon the rest of the world against Iran, right? And I'm like, that's a valid point because embargoes cover things that, you know, parts that make helicopters fly, you know, maintenance parts. And you know what? Like, if anything, they may have a point. The, 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 the embargoes may have worked. And now the president's falling out of the sky in a helicopter because of poorly trained pilots. So if, <laughs> if that is the case and sanctions are supposed to work, why are you giving condolences? I don't, I don't know that any sanction, any parts would have stopped, would have kept that helicopter from crashing into a mountain. No, it's uh, just a and, good, it's and, just and a good fog. excuse. It's just a good excuse yeah. on their part. And then on our part, it's like, okay, well, if you start acting right, we'll lift the embargoes and maybe your president will stop falling out of the sky. You know what I'm saying? I mean, I'm not yeah. saying that's why it happened. I'm just saying they opened that can of worms. Yeah, no, it's a good point. And when people were talking, you know, when people were talking about it, I used every Kobe, uh, Kobe GIF that I could when they were talking about don't fly helicopters into bad weather. You know, Kobe's like, mm, yeah, I can, I can relate to that one. So, dude, I'm not going to fly with Josh. I'm not going to Josh's house. I'm not riding with Josh. We get pulled over by the cops. Like, that dude's got a lot of bad juju going on right you, now. You know, you're happening. not going to Iran with Josh. No, nope, not going to Iran with Josh. We're not going hiking. We ain't doing none of that stuff, man. <laughs> oh yeah, um, yeah. We'll see. I, I you're but right. Nothing I'll changes continue. though, right? I mean, policy no, wise, no, what Iran's been doing, the nothing has change. very little say anyway, right? It's 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 kind of ceremonial. That dude doesn't even know what day it is. Oh, talking we're talking about their their president. Oh, my bad. <laughs> dude, did you hear his? Oh, my man, God. I tell you what. I, so I so what everybody has say. gas, right? We have gas on the show all the time and, you know, whatever. It's probably like the most entertaining part of our show. But come on. He sat there and talked about when he was the vice president during the pandemic and how Barry sent him up to Chicago. I'm like. Come on, man. Detroit. Or yeah, Detroit. Oh. It's like, seriously? Did you see his speech at Morehouse? Oh. Yes. Right? Man. Yes. Bro. It was basically, it, 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 it was basically his, you know, they're gonna put you back in chains, man. Come on. Dude, even Bill uh, Maher went so on Greg Gutfeld and was like, Yes, he does not live in the same country that the rest of us do. And for Bill Maher to come out and say that, dude. I was going to comment on that since we're kind of, you know, on the way to wrapping up here is I, I saw that last night, you know, it advertised, you know, Michelle just got home from work and I was like, oh, I'm going to watch this because Bill Maher, Dr. Drew and uh, what's her name? Uh, press secretary for Bush, um, Dana Perino and Kat Temp were on there and I'm like, oh, this could be good. I like this. Bill Maher coming on. And then Bill Maher went straight, went, you know, he went 100 percent retard. He went full retard. In the first, you saw that Roger after uh, Gutfeld uh, ended up his monologue, he he just kind of went full retard right off the right off the bat on Trump, and I'm like, ugh. But otherwise, I was I was glad to see it. I like to see stuff like that. You know, Bill Maher and Greg Gutfeld, Doctor Drew talking. That's good. We need that, and I applaud Fox for doing that, having the courage to bring Bill Maher on. Yeah, and he, I mean, the guy obviously leans left. You know, my problem with Bill Maher, it's like, like you said, when he's cooking off with Trump, it's it's no different than this trial that's going on right now, okay? They have made their minds up that he is guilty. No matter what the evidence says, no matter what the witnesses, no matter what the defense, no matter what the prosecution says, no matter what any of them say, they're like, well, he's guilty. Well, no, all of this points to something else. Well, I don't care, he's guilty. And that's where, that that's where, you know, that's where my problem comes in. And you know, I, I just read up here that I guess the defense rested. So now we're going to wait for, uh, you know, the guilty uh, verdict to come back. But then during yeah. Cohen's like last day of, of testimony, like the dude stole six. <laughs> dude, <laughs> your star witness committed grand theft larceny and admitted to it on the stand. And then what does NBC say? MSNBC? It was a rebalancing of, of funds. That's what they called it. A rebalancing of fund. Unbelievable, dude. So first, the judge has to take everything and then give the jury the charges. Uh, that'll probably happen Thursday, and then deliberations will begin. Uh, Josh put his hand up like he wanted to close out. You want to close out, Josh? No, I was just telling you you have a minute left. Oh. <laughs> well, you go ahead and close out then. No, you're good. Finish, your, finish what you were saying. No, I wasn't saying. I was just, now it's time to close out because we got the the time Nazi over there. All three of us are Nazis and someone blocked us today for being Nazis on X, but 
Y'all know the All truth. Right. All right. So we got 45 seconds. As always, thanks for listening. Maybe in the future, we'll go back to two hours. Uh, but Rumble, Rumble seems to be where it's at. We didn't know. We didn't know. So in the interim, keep those canteen cups full. Keep them full of good whiskey. Don't get pulled over by the police. Don't talk about your day. All right. Don't give them reason. Don't give them that probable cause that they're always looking for. All right. And don't break the law. <laughs>